Aha! Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am your host for the day. I am Braggy, the son of Magnar. And yes, as you can tell, I am a Viking. And I am Egil Thorson. I too am a Viking. And your sound effects for today. Indeed. So what we're going to be talking about then, Braggy? Now today we are here to tell you folks at home, and how are you today? Let us know. A folk tale from Iceland. Ooh. From those Icelandic Vikings. The home of ice and fire. Ooh. Now, our folk tale, and please sit down in your nice comfy chair and get a nice hot drink on the go and get yourself comfy first. It's about the merfolk. Merfolk? What is that? The merfolk? You've not heard of the merf merfolk? No, I haven't. Mermaids and mermen. I've heard of mermaids. Have you never met a merman? Uh, frankly, no. Right, would you like to meet one? No, especially no. <laughs> well, one day, our farmer, as they always are in these tales, oh, and his name were. was called Thorgrim. Thorgrim? Thorgrim. Yes. Thorgrim the Mighty. He was a very mighty man, and he was very well known for being an excellent farmer. Yeah. And he was out one day in the morning in his field, ploughing, mm -hmm. doing some talking. Come along, Daisy! Move! Go along, Smith, move on. And he had a nice group of cows, and move. they was ploughing the fields, putting out stones and throwing these stones aside. Ah! Big Ooh. stones and small stones. Oh, a big stone, yeah. Giant, enormous stones. Oh, that's too big for me to lift. He'd have to go and get his friends for that one. Oh, and, and Gerald. Well, he'd been working all morning, toiling away on the plough, and he thought, well, it's a nice afternoon, and I think I'm going to go fishing. Get the rowing boat out. In his little long boat. It wasn't a long ship, because it was only small and tiny, and couldn't go far out into the ocean. It was a short ship. Yes. <laughs> so, there he goes, he got a couple of his work, you know, a couple of his farm hands to come with him, and he was fairly well known for fishing. In fact, it was said that he was the best fisherman in the whole of the north of Iceland. Thought he was the best fisherman in the north of Iceland. I oh, know! What are you telling me for? It's for them out there, isn't it? And as he's walking back to his longhouse, he said to his wife, I'm going out in the longboat! Going out in the longboat? Won't be long, my dear! And he said, I'm going to go fishing for our tea. What he said? Do all like fishes for their dinner. Tell There's it. a little fishy on a little plate. Yeah, just make sure you bring some fish back this time. And, you know, he, he walked down to the coast. His long house is about a quarter of a mile inland. Yeah. So he, he was walking along with his do, two, like two friends. <laughs> yeah, he was very active, he was very strong. And he got to his little long ship, little long boat. Yeah. And got into the water. And then it started rowing. <laughs> heave away! <laughs> haul away! <laughs> heave away! <laughs> haul away! And, and before they knew it, they was out in the middle of the ocean. Ooh. And yeah. he was thinking to himself, well, oh, this reminds me of when Thor went fishing for Gurmangan, but oh, I'll bet I never catch a creature like that on my line. I'll swing the net over. <laughs> He was a line fisherman, didn't have nets. Oh, and right. he threw the lines over with lots of hooks. Oh! And suddenly the hook, the line got very heavy. I've caught something! And he was very happy. Yay! I caught something! And he was trying to put it up. But it was very, very heavy, whatever he had caught. And it took all three men to haul up what they had caught. Come on, boys! Haul away! Oh, you've Heave got, away! You've got a big one here. Haul away! Oh dear. Go on then. And, whoa, they thought to themselves, well, we must have the most mightiest fish on this line, which will feed us for months and weeks. Do me a favour, will you, mate? Get this hook out of me. And suddenly, bobbing up and down on the end of the hook, on the end of the line, was a merman. That's me, folks. And he was not very happy. Oh, come on, this... This hook's getting a bit bit sharp here. Come on! And they dragged him on board the boat. 
Oh great, what a great day man. And after a few minutes his fishy tail disappeared and he had legs. And the man was naked. Can I have some clothes on it? It's a bit chilly. And they had an old tatty grey cloak in the in the boat and they gave him that. Oh, I look right beautiful in this, don't I? And that oh. man, well Thorgrim, he, he <laughs> thought to himself, whoa, this is my catch, he belongs to me. You're going to be my slave on land and you're going to work for me, he said. You reckon? Oh, the merman, well, he wasn't very happy at by this. He said, I was down there in my little village on the ocean floor and I was repairing my chimney on my house when your hop came along and caught me. Chimney underwater? Yes. Well, well you know, merfolk, they're different to us. Um, <laughs> you know, half. Well, well, half of them are different, yeah. people half are not. And, well, they started to row back to shore. Rowing and rowing. What a rotten day. And the Don't merman... Don't housework. Next minute, hook right where the sun don't shine, and I'm dragged in this rotten old cloak, and I'm told I'm a slave. We'll see about that, mate. And the man, Thorgrim, he put the merman, he threw him into a sack, tied it up at the neck. Oh, what a great thing to do. Thanks, pal. And then they managed to dock the boat on the, on the jetty, mm. and Thorgrim, he was a big, mighty man, very tall for his age. And he lifted the bag on the merman and he managed to get him out of the boat. But he was too heavy for him to have it on his back, so he was dragging him. Come on, we'll drag it! Oh, and he's going to drag him back a quarter of a mile, foot, oh. a couple of leagues to his longhouse. God, dear, this is hard work. It's not much fun in here, neither. But by his jitty, he had a small outbuilding where he kept his fishing tackle. And there was this dog that was there waiting for him. And this dog was a very loving dog, but our man Thorgrim, he was a very angry man. And tried to kick the dog. Ow, 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 ow. But the dog was too quick and managed to get away. Oh, right. And our merman, well, he laughed hotly at this. <laughs> and pointed, looking at that. Well, Thorgrim looked at him rather annoyed of a What's a bit your of problem, eh? Oh, you'll find out, mate. And he said, well, you're coming back to the longhouse. And he started to carry him up this old oh, pack, ah, oh, dragging him in yeah. his sack. There's a few stones here. Ah! Until he came to this bit of a bump in the path. And as Thorgrim was putting him backwards, he tripped over it. Ah! And our merman, well, he started to laugh again. <laughs> Heartedly. <laughs> Oh. Big belly laughs. Oh, oh. Look at you, pulling over. Oh, what a wally. What a fool. <laughs> and, well, again, Thorgrim looked at him rather meaningful and stared. He wasn't very happy. And he started to drag him again back to his longhouse. Oh, my back. And he got to his longhouse and his wife came out all jolly. Hello, darling. Get back home, she said. Did Come you get a fish? No, he said. Oh. I got a merman. Oh, really? What's a merman? Well, then he opened the shack and showed him. Hello, darling. Hey! And there was this mighty, astonishing, good-looking fella. Very strong. <laughs> you wish, eh? And he said, well, he's going to be our slave. Oh, no, I'm not. But, well, our farmer Thorgrim, he kind of sh shunned his, his, his wife and his affection. Away! He was very suspicious because he had heard rumours from other folk that she had been having secret affairs. I don't know if I could trust you. Oh, yes you can, dear. And the well, merman was laughing at this heartily. Ha ha ha! Heartily! Ha ha ha! And pointing his finger. Do, 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 do. And, well, a couple of days have passed, and already the farmer Thorgrim had put the merman to work in the fields. And our farmer, he was very curious, and he couldn't get to sleep thinking why the merman kept on laughing at him on these three occasions. Well, mate, you know, I'm an ordinary guy, but I'm a bit suspicious. Why do you keep laughing at me? What is so... Am I amusing? Am I here to amuse you, mm. eh? What is so funny about me? Indeed, 
And then the merman explained that, well, I will tell you the answer, but only if you promise to set me free and to row me back out in your boat, do some rowing impressions, I go, rowing out, uh, 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 and let me go. Uh. And, well, curiosity got the better of the farmer Thorgrim. Okay, I'll do it out for you, mate. He I'll agreed. do that. But you can allow, I want to know. And so they both sat round the hearth, and the farmer gave the merman some mead. Yeah, mate. And they started drinking. Blug, blug, blug. And then the merman said, well, when you first pulled me out of the boat, your dog came up to you. He was very affectionate, but you shunned him. And I laughed at that. Yeah, I was a bit rough with him. He was. And the dog was barking, <laughs> howling, <laughs> wanting your attention. Woof, woof. Ow, ow. And so, you know, the merman said, well, I found that very amusing that there was you with your loving dog and you had no love for him. You ought to get out more, mate. And then the second time I laughed was when you were trying to pull me up in the sack and you tripped over that mound. Can you remember that mound? Yeah. Well, under that mound is a big chest of treasure. Cool. Of gold. Wow. And silver. Wow. And I promise you that when you go and dig it up, it will be there. Huh. Seems to know a lot about that, And on the third occasion, when you brought me up to your longhouse, yeah. and you shunned your wife, huh. I laughed. Because I know when somebody is honest, oh, and I know that your wife has never cheated on you, and is the most faithful wife you will ever have. You seem to know a lot, you and her people. Well, the farmer was very curious by these things he was told, and he very quickly stood up Ooh. and went and get a wooden spade. <laughs> and what do you think he did? Don't. He went down to the little lump, mm. and he dug it up, and this is what he did. Huh. Started to dig it up. Oh, 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 bling. And you're digging a hole, I go, dig a hole, I go. Uh, uh, uh. And suddenly he found a chest. Uh, and he yeah. opened it up. Uh, and what did he find? Gold? Yes. Silver? Silver. Jewels. Garnets. Ooh. Jewels. Pearls. And from this moment he knew that the mer man, the merfolk man, uh -huh. was telling the truth. Yeah, we all knew that in the end. And so he had to keep his promise. He said, yeah. well, I'll give you some nice clothes, because I feel sorry for taking you out of the ocean. I'm going to row you back. So they walked that back down to the longboat, the long ship, yeah. the little longboat, and he got in with the merman, and he rowed, and he rowed, oh, and he rowed. Oh, and oh. He, told he got to the part of the ocean where he caught the merman. It Drop us off here, mate. And, well, that's it. The merman jumped back in the ocean, Splash. got back his fishy tail, Splish. and was never seen again. Oh. And this was how the tale of the merman and the farmer of Bulgar went. Right. The end. Well, that's an interesting story there. I never knew merf, merf folk had such perception. But, Indeed. Uh, still, every day's a learning day. Yes, and you also learn that they have chimneys, I go. Yeah, and underwater fire. Yes, indeed. Amazing, that. Would that be volcanic action? Could be. Ah, now, you if you've enjoyed this tale, mm -hmm. what should I do, I go? Well, how about press the... Uh, the uh, if you're new. Yeah, press the bell in the corner there and leave us a comment. We will get back to you. It does take a bit of time, but we, we endeavour to do that. And we're interested to hear what you have to say. So I'll hand you back over to Bragi. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>